So hello and welcome to this SDC Verifier webinar. Today we are going to speak about structural design verification of offshore structures according to uh, DNB rules. Uh, I'm not sharing my video to save some uh, quality for the internet connection. So a brief introduction slide. Uh, my name is Alej Hischuk. Uh, a lot of you already know me, but I also see that these days uh, a lot of new people have joined this webinar. So uh, I'm working with SDC Verifier for more than 10 years. I am uh, I am originally a structural design engineer. Then I switched to managing our engineering services within SDC Verifier. And now I'm in charge of the operational activity at, uh, at the company. Uh, you can always uh, reach me out by email or you have a phone number here and uh, I'm happy to connect with uh, you on LinkedIn to discuss more uh, further. I'm also joined today by Patronek, our marketing manager. He will help me to guide you through the session, uh, track the questions, maybe uh, we'll uh, uh, yeah, point out if uh, there is some immediate questions or uh, uh, remind me about something I forget. And uh, I believe today with us is also Bogdan Solonkov, who is uh, our business development manager. If you're interested in a quotation or in a, uh, in a trial license, feel free to reach out to him as well. So uh, we're going to speak about the evaluation of uh, Offshore structure, uh, I have an example like this, which is uh, an example of, of a mud mat, some uh, lattice structure, beam structure on top with the couple of different cross sections and joints and beams uh, and, and the mat itself made with the plate elements at the bottom. Uh, so we are going to study a couple of uh, DNV checks and uh, how to perform that. The model is done in FEMAP. I have exactly the same copy of this model made with ANSYS mechanical. So uh, everything I'm going to show to you today is available for all three programs we are currently supporting for ANSYS mechanical, FEMAP, and uh, SimCenter 3D. Uh, but let's start with the with the background and with the idea of why would we need these checks. So. Uh, uh, Model in FEMAP, yeah, let's get back to it. Model in FEMAP or any FEA software brings you the unique opportunity to be able to uh, verify, to be able to simulate your design, to be able to uh, have an output like stresses, forces, displacements, uh, see how your model deflects, see how it operates under the load, and much more. But uh, the simulation itself doesn't give us an answer to a question if the model is okay or not okay. Therefore, uh, stresses are very often not enough. There are multiple of different failure modes that has to be taken into account and they are not always obvious and linear and depending on the uh, purely the yield limit. So, uh, for example, the, the structure can be subjected to the weld failure or fatigue. Uh, we can have problems with uh, buckling of the plates, uh, buckling of beams, uh, members failure, tripling is uh, also a, a significant problem. Uh, connections and joints uh, has to be evaluated for the overall strength of the, of the joint. And of course, uh, bolted connections, welded connections, riveted connections, and so on, all this type of failures could happen. And just the yielding limit or the stress doesn't give us a clear answer. Is the structure okay or not okay according to the standard? So that's why we have industry rules, which are describing the potential failure modes, which are describing the uh, uh, recommended practices or evaluation procedures for certain checks and failure of uh, failure modes. And uh, in the library of SDC Verifier, we have more than 30 different codes, standards and regulations. But uh, today we're going to speak specifically about some of the DNV codes, although it fills the uh, idea of the software for uh, 
all the other uh, verifications or even some that we are missing uh, it's also possible to to have that so what are the codes it's usually a huge document a couple of tens or hundreds of pages with uh, lots of formulas evaluation procedures tables to take the data from graphs and so on and uh, of course a skill engineer a skilled engineer can perform a check according to rules and regulations on with a pen and paper but uh, this is not very much effective so uh, yeah one of the first uh, ideas how to perform this check is obviously a hand calculation but this is not extremely a uh, great idea first of all it is time consuming second the room for error is huge uh, you make a typo, you miss something, uh, and uh, yeah, result is not completely correct. Uh, and the third uh, is that you are checking only one location, one member, one element under one loading condition at a time. So another idea might be uh, spreadsheets or programming something yourself. Uh, it is a bit of automation. It uh, makes the possibility of error a bit smaller but still you check one member under one loading condition. You have to import the data from simulation, measurements, wherever else. So you, have, you need to, have a, to find a way on this. And then uh, checks are also getting changed. Uh, there are updates to codes, which has to be taken into account and so on. So we were doing this kind of checks as structural engineering consultants since 1998 as a company. And uh, we were struggling with this boring and repetitive routine. That's how we came with the solution, which helps to perform the verification according to multiple industry rules and DNV, including DNV. So uh, this graph shows the idea of SDC Verifier in six simple steps. First step is connection to your model. It is simultaneous. You launch ANSYS, PMAP, or SimCenter 3D, and you have a SDC verifier connected on top, uh, which is able to read the information about your model, which is able to read the outputs, uh, update it and use for verification. Second step is loads and combinations. I would say like that, because we can process your uh, existing um, outputs so you might have had the, the results uh, file from somewhere else uh, which is ready for the evaluation but very often you have a set of basic cases like uh, gravity some forces winds maybe waves and they have to be combined into a certain way as standard described this because uh, the most severe condition for the structure is not always obvious so you usually have to check your structure under hundreds of uh, conditions and not only one when you combine everything together. Third, and one of the most important, well, all of those items are important, but this is what allows us to do the checks directly in the FEA program is automatic recognition or detection of structural items. So the checks are done on uh, structural items and not on the finite elements. So your model in PMAP and Seam Center is just a, a million of finite elements, but you need to know where do you have the weld, the beam member, uh, plate, and so on to be able to uh, determine the results according to the check. And we do this completely automatically in one click. Next part is the checks. Uh, I will show that, but I want to say that checks in this deceiver verifier, the biggest benefit of it is that it's not a black box. It's a completely open structure with, where you see the formulas, where you see the evaluation procedure, the input parameters, and you can not only see it, you can have, uh, uh, you're able to uh, modify it or write your own. And then the last but not least is automatic reporting, which enables the uh, possibility to uh, describe your process, to explain how the model is built, what are the results of general FEA and the results of code checking directly uh, with the uh, automatic structure, and then it can be exported into a document. 
And for some period of time, as the CV, that was the full workflow of SDC Verifier, we were able to uh, give you an answer. What are the results of a certain, uh, uh, according to certain rules uh, for your FEA model? But that's not what engineers want. Engineers want their structures to comply with these rules. So now we also have an optimization, which is uh, a possibility to map your cross section or weld type or plate thickness, uh, probably something else. So any kind of parameter to uh, match the requirements of the standard. So it's possible to loop the software to uh, run the checks with different variables and then to pick the best possible design decision based on the requirements of the standard. So to sum up, SDC verifier is combinations or lo your loads, recognition of structural items, checks according to standards, reports, and design optimization. In terms of combination, it is usually something like this. Uh, you have a document uh, which prescribes the loads to be taken into account with a certain safety factors, partial load factors, simplification coefficients, and so on. Uh, SDC Verifier enables the possibility to build this matrix with taking a basic cases that you have uh, and building a matrix to combine them or to multiply them with a certain factor to take into account in the calculation. It is not only beneficial to be able to simulate multiple different conditions, it is also very important to be able to, uh, to save time on the uh, repetitive calculation and uh, simulation time itself because you can set up some basic cases and unit loads and change them and multiply them within the combinations which saves you uh, simulation time and of course it's possible to store this uh, data and it's possible to share it with the colleagues and use for the future projects uh, second is automatic recognition. I will demonstrate that with the interface today but very nice and quick example of what is possible so if we have a finite element model like this, built with shells or sometimes even solids, um, you have a possibility to uh, run the weld finder tool. And all you have to do within SDC Verifier weld finder is just click find. It automatically analyzes your model and gives you a warning if there is a mesh disconnectivity or problems with a certain uh, groups of elements that are subjected to be the wells. And then uh, you can either review it or well, skip for the moment as in this uh, um, video and you have a complete list of all the wells within your model. You have a full control over that. You can add, remove, modify and you can, for well strengths, you can set up a type of weld and uh, use that in the well evaluation because our verification is not only uh, recognizing the elements that are subjected to be the welds, but also reorienting the stresses and forces into the well direction. So uh, we can either apply the S and for, uh, so set up a classification according to standard for a weld to apply an S and serve and to run deterministic fatigue based on Palmgren minor rule. Or we can use forces to summarize the forces that are going through the complete weld to calculate the capacity of the weld and check if it's strong enough to withstand the, the forces that are going through it. And this is how we, we treat your model after the recognition. So we have, uh, we know all the welds and uh, we are able to use the results on that welds for the evaluation. Uh, in terms of DNV standards, at the moment in the library of SDC Verifier, there is, uh, as you can see, five standards. We have a check for fatigue, uh, we have a check for plate buckling, two of them, and for stiffener buckling. We also have a well strength according to yeah, LRFD or WSD method. And we are currently working on DNV OS F101 which is a piping code, and I assume it is coming in the next uh, major release at the beginning of the next year. How the checks are implemented within SDC Verifier? It is pretty simple. We use results of your uh, analysis, and we use the parameters of your model as variables 
for writing formulas. So we are basically, uh, yeah, creating the formulas is pretty simple. It's like a uh, simple Python logic or Excel logic for writing formulas, but you can use results of your evaluation for creating these formulas. And as I mentioned, it's completely open. So you have a description where it's taken from, uh, which table is used for the results and so on. Uh, next part is the automatic documentation. So it's possible to build template-based report based on the uh, loading you have uh, created and to completely describe the, uh, the procedure of the evaluation, the setup of the model, uh, combinations of the loads, general FEA results, code checking results, and whatever you want to include in this. And benefit is that if something changes in your model, you just go to, to the FEA program, adjust the design and recalculate it and regenerate it. So it's literally three button clicks after the model update to receive a new document with uh, the same setup, but new results. And I always like to say that it is very beneficial in the final stages of the report when you have last minute design changes close to a deadline friday evening your manager is asking for a uh, for an update or for uh, small modifications we know all this small modifications they do appear on friday evenings and they are not so small so this is helping a bit to reduce the deadline pressure and uh, definitely the last one last feature but not the last slide uh, is the uh, possibility to uh, map or to pick the possible replacement for uh, your design to uh, make the uh, the model match the requirements of the standard you can pick the best possible cross section or stiffener type or plate thickness or weld type to uh, match the requirements of the standard after you did a check. So there is no need, no more need in guessing the correct thickness or correct shape or correct weld type. You can uh, evaluate it. I will stop on that. We just did, I think a couple of months ago, we did a webinar on optimization tool, which is now very extensive. And uh, uh, if you are interested in that, you can find the recording of that on YouTube. And uh, yeah, just search for SDC Verifier Optimization. I think it should be there. Uh, so to sum up, what is SDC Verifier? It is an extension to popular FEA programs like ANSYS, FEMAP, and SimCenter 3D to perform the checks according to rules and regulations within the FEA programs. We have a lot of popular standards available, including DNV. Uh, we have uh, all the standards are open and can be customized and the complete calculation procedure is uh, stored. So you can use it for uh, updating, for extensive reporting, and of course, for design optimization. Multiple companies around the world are benefiting with using SDC Verifier. For example, Olsys is uh, one of our big customers who use SDC Verifier for operational evaluations for yield and buckling checks of the pioneering spirit. It's a vessel, uh, one of the biggest, I believe, in the world, to uh, which is used for installation of the offshore structures. And they generate thousands of pages of results in days instead of weeks or months. So uh, except the automation benefit, the time saving is uh, is huge. And uh, not only them, um, a lot of offshore companies, uh, vessel operators, uh, but not only the offshore, also civil engineering and heavy lifting machinery uh, companies are using SDC Verifier around the world, uh, as well as uh, certification societies like Bureau Veritas and uh, so on. So if you would have uh, yeah, this concludes my uh, presentation of what is SDC Verifier. Now let's go directly to the interface. I'll show a bit of uh, this process now within the interface, I will, and I will show the, the procedure for the evaluation. 
so for this uh, demo, we use again uh, we use a model in Teamup, but everything I'm going to show to you today is also available in Ansys Mechanical or SimCenter 3D. Uh, I have this simple model with beams and plates, and we have a couple of uh, different loads applied to it. Like uh, we have a gravity accelerations in some directions, top forces, side forces, winds. And so on. By the way, winds are applied with SDC verifier. I will show you in a second how to quickly. So we not only post process and evaluate your result, but we also have some tools to simplify the complicated or boring things. So uh, what does SDC verifier look like? I prefer to use it in the standalone mode, so I have a full uh, screen, full list of uh, all the functionalities. But it's also possible to go to embed. Not going to switch it now, but it's going to look something like this was the panel of SDC verifier on the side. And I see more and more people are uh, using this at the moment. So, um, what I wanted to show, I wanted to show that a connection of SDC verifier to the uh, FEA program is simultaneous, and everything you have in the list of uh, your uh, FEA model. Uh, is also available in SDC Verifier, and we have some tools to process it, to modify multiple at a time, and so on. But it's not the focus of today's webinars. Uh, webinar. Although I wanted to show you how to apply a wind in SDC Verifier, very simple uh, load. Well, complicated load, but applied in a simple way. So what I uh, what we have is an interface like this, where you define the vertical direction of your structure. Uh, you define the direction of the wind in global coordinate system, or you can also uh, set the, the vector. And uh, you apply, you select the portion of model which is subjected to this wind uh, in a multi uh, selector window of SDC verifier where you can use different rules to set it up. And you apply a pressure or velocity over height. And uh, press OK as the see verifier applies a distributed pressure on on your model. So we're going to use this load uh, for the evaluation. Yeah, as I said, after the connection. So uh, yeah, after the connection, we go to the load combinations. Uh, and if something is changing in your FEA model, you just have this button here where you can update and read the new data. It might ask you to clear the results or keep the existing ones. Uh, and you can see that read of the uh, model has been done. And if you have just changed the name or changed the model, uh, you can update this directly into SDC Verifier. So uh, first step of this evaluation is setting up your calculation. We have a, a demonstration job uh, set so it's linear static calculation where we have this individual loads. By individual loads, we mean a combination of fem load and constraint. So I set this demo in a way that you would have this uh, for uh, for those who uh, want to set up the base cases and combine them. So you can have this nine different loads, combine them with constraint and have nine different uh, individual loads. But you can also import the existing results. Well, I have the same results for this nine loads, but maybe you imported results from file or have already set the combinations. You can import them and use them as individual loads. It's completely okay. And uh, I see people using that as well. Uh, but if you want to combine that loads linearly, you have load sets where you can execute, create, edit multiple and see the matrix of different uh, uh, loads combined in a different way. I somehow didn't include these accelerations, but I just put some factors for the demonstration. And then we have a load group, which is an envelope set of everything which is included in it. So I created one group, which I called operational conditions. And this group is uh, including nine, uh, 10 load sets, uh, which are uh, uh, yeah, basically one group of all the load sets. So it's showing the worst of uh, all, all 10 load sets uh, that we have created. So uh, how do we perform the checks according to DNV? As I mentioned, our FEA model is uh, 54,000 finite elements. 
but the checks are done on structural members. So uh, let's say we're going to speak about plate buckling or weld checks today, and we need to know this plates, welds, or beam members. So for that, we have recognition tools in SDC verifier, and uh, let's uh, detect a couple of structural members within our model. Let's start with beam members. Uh, so usually everything you have to do, well, let's, uh, we don't need beam members. Let's, doesn't matter. Let's do the beams first. Let's do all of them. So first of all, it's joint finder. Uh, I already have joints recognized. Uh, let's do the recognition of beams. All you have to do to detect all the beams within your model with their uh, CM type, uh, type uh, length, uh, and so on. You just play, uh, press find. Uh, question is, do we want to update the uh, joints? We don't. So in a second, we have 24 beam members recognized in our model, and we can select all of them. We have a full control over the lengths for Y and Z and for torsional. We have a filter to work them uh, to work with them, but we can select all of them and just plot with colors to see how SDC verifier recognized those members. And uh, in a second, the plot is done, and we see that after the recognition is done, we treat every member as a separate um, uh, every group of elements. So I'll turn on the mesh. So we see uh, that it can have, uh, I don't know, 10, 15, 20, 100, doesn't matter how many uh, finite element, but it is recognized as one structural member. Then we have a list of, uh, okay, we recognize the beams. Next part is, uh, let's find plates. Same, completely same idea. All you have to do is to press find. And after this recognition is done, it takes slightly more time because there is a lot of uh, members to be recognized. We know all the sections, panels, plates, and stiffeners within our model, and uh, they are all listed. You have a full control over it and so on. And here you, let's say, pick this one, section in Z direction, and pick the plates of this section. Here you can do the same, you can preview them. And of course, sicknesses and dimensions and stresses on those plates are going to be used for plate buckling check. So, uh, show full model. So, uh, all the plates over here are uh, highlighted and you can use them. Well, it's plates of one section, but for each and every section you have that. You can use them for plate buckling evaluation. Um, okay. Next thing we can do is to automatically detect all the welds on our model, which is a really nice feature. And again, all we have to do is click one button, find. Uh, for a 1 million finite element model, it takes about a minute to recognize everything. So within this model, it is yeah, seven seconds, maybe 10, to detect all the uh, welds. Again, as I said, there is some notification on the quality of your mesh which might be needed to review, or more likely it is continuous parts and it's hard to detect which part is welded, which is non-welded. So you will have to determine that, but we can skip it for a moment. And as you can see, we have a full list of all the welds within your model. There is one nice feature. I, I know that some uh, customers are using models which has thousands of welds, and it would be nice to group it. You, can, you have settings where you can, uh, uh, pick a selection of the model to be recognized and a couple of more, and you can change the default name. But uh, in the future, there is also a new functionality appearing where we will be able to group the elements by certain, uh, well, uh, in any way that user wants. But now we want to just show all of them. And we select, uh, what do we want to plot? Welds in colors. We plot the welds and we see <laughs> all the welds in our model. Yeah, maybe it's nicer to plot it highlighted. So we will see each and every weld highlighted on the, on the mesh. So every weld in our model is determined. The stresses are reoriented in weld direction. So we can use it for the checks. 
although we don't know what is the type of this wells. So we have to go to well strength settings, select the well parts we have, and just set uh, type for it. Let's say we're going to have a double partial penetration with the weld lag of uh, two millimeters, say three. Uh, press apply. And for all the welds, the type of the weld has been assigned, and now it is possible to use it for, for the weld strength check, which we are going to do in a second. I'm pressing OK, uh, and we can go to the standards. As you can see, there is already a couple of standards prepared within this project, but I will do a new one. So to add the standard in SDC Verifier, you go to this item, right-click on it, add maybe yeah right click on it add and uh, there is a full list of all the codes we have some abs rules ask me uh, dnv which we're going to speak about euro codes and so on we go to dnv and let's do the dnv well strengths we need to use all of the method here and uh, every standard starts with the wizard like this why do we need this wizard? Because we still need a human being engineer to make the decisions. Standards are uh, setting some choices for us, like what is the limit state, for example, or correlation factor, which depends on material you use. By the way, any uh, parameter you have here, it's possible to uh, press F1 and you will see uh, explanation of this so online help which for example yeah you don't know how to set up a certain thing what is this correlation factor you press f1 go to our help and you see that this is the correlation factor beta w which is obtained from table c4 in the dnv standard and it depends on the material type and depending on what type of materials you do have you will set this factor from 0 0.83 up till 1 uh, in our case, we have one by default, we press OK. Geometrical check. Do we want to, uh, certain standards are prescribing the wells to be of a certain length in comparison to uh, to, to weld uh, throat. So uh, here you can uh, include or exclude this geometrical check and pick the uh, rules for it. So is it Eurocode or American Welding Society? And you can see that weld lengths should be more than four weld thicknesses and so on. Uh, let's include the weld check according to Eurocode. So welds that are not passing the check will be skipped. Uh, calculation method, uh, we summarize the force through the full weld part. Uh, and a couple of coefficients which probably affect the, yes, the material factor. And uh, we can also uh, update the gamma M factor. All these settings can be set once and forever. <clears throat> this is one of the also recent feature which is available only in SDC Refire 2022. I'll press OK for the moment, but in the settings, you have a st standard custom settings. I'm still not happy with the name for it. We couldn't come up with the better one. So uh, standard custom settings, which mean uh, that we can define these parameters for DNV, LRFD, we can set, okay, we will always have one. We will always summarize per weld and our uh, gamma M uh, factor will be 1.3 uh, and so on. So we store it in this way. And then if we are in a standard wizard, we just click on this button and it asks, do you want to fill in the standard settings or not? You say, okay, and it's done. Uh, be careful with the parameters that has to be, uh, has multiple selections because it will set one same uh, value for all the selections you have. Uh, but it, it is a big time saver if you do multiple standards and multiple checks. So after you set these rules, you can always go back to Weld Finder, check, have I set everything up? Have uh, uh, do I have a uh, correct uh, values or well types to be used? And then you press OK. Uh, as I mentioned, all the standards in SDC Verifier are open. So you can see the checks that are included. 
It starts with a geometrical check, which we just included, but you can also have, uh, yeah, you check the dimensions, that, then you check the throat stresses, summarize them over directions, and it all ends up with the uh, total well check, uh, which, uh, yeah, basically you have a, a, a utilization factor for one misses, for uh, actual, for uh, material, uh, basic, basic material, and the uh, overall maximum of those. And uh, yeah, you can adjust, even adjust this formulas if necessary. But what you can also do is, of course, you want to see the results. So to preview the results, you click on, uh, right click on the check and select, okay, let's use plot. And we want to plot the overall utilization factor for all the welds. And we just press preview. For the first time, the check is going to be calculated. We do the geometrical check and run through the formulas. So first plot is slightly, takes slightly more time than later. But uh, yeah, as soon as the check is done, then uh, you have this plots and results uh, immediate. Uh, the calculation time depends on the size of your model and on the amount of uh, loads and conditions you have uh, in the uh, in the model. And uh, for a simple model like this, it would take maybe 30 seconds. I don't know how much. Uh, we're speaking at the moment, uh, maximum, I don't know, it's a couple of minutes, or if you have extremely huge models like uh, ship structures with the complete uh, proce procedure for hundreds of loads, it might be slightly longer, but this is, here are the results already, so maybe it took us 40 seconds. Um, what do we receive is a utilization factor for every weld, uh, with a graph from 0 to 1.2, so everything what is above 1 is not passing the DNV requirements of on well strengths. And what, as we can see here in these connections, our checks, our welds are not strong enough to withstand the forces that are going through it. So uh, what we can also do, we can preview the uh, results with a table. Uh, for that, we click on Expand Table. We check the, we select the load. We want to show it on overall worst so operational conditions. All the welds, fill table, and here is the list. So it starts from the worst to the best. Most of the welds are fine, but on top we have a couple of them which are not passing the requirements of the standard. Let's, uh, I don't know, pick any of those. Let's say, I think 210. And you can highlight this uh, weld. So you can see where is actually that weld. So text or here. Uh, oh yeah, if I turn off the sickness, once again, uh, if I press highlight. Yeah, here it is the weld highlighted. So this is the weld which is not passing the, the check and we would have to uh, improve the quality of that weld. So what we can do, we can press OK on our table. Well, I'm, I'm showing an example on uh, one weld. Of course, the best thing would be to go to optimization, create a component of all the welds that are not passing the check, and create an optimization rule. But simple, if there's only one not passing, you uh, remember the number of that weld, go to Weld Finder, click on Edit, uh, Search for, we don't have a filter on the name. Ah, filter by weld ID 210. Navigate. Here it is. You change this weld from, ah, sorry. Uh, here it is in the weld, find, weld string settings 210. Navigate. And here you change this, the quality of that weld from double partial penetration to double full penetration or a fillet weld of a, of a certain size, uh, let's say double full penetration, apply, okay. And after that, you of course would have to recalculate the check. So you, uh, yeah, immediately after you change something, as the CVR is asking, do you want to clear the results? You say yes and uh, regenerate the check again with the new results. In terms of optimization, it is easier when you need to optimize more you go to optimization, select add, 
and here select uh, the rule, let's say weld strengths. So in my operational conditions group for the weld strengths of TNV utilization factor overall, I want to optimize my weld 210 uh, from the list. I select 210. Press OK. I select possible replacements, so double full penetration, for example. I add it. I select double partial penetration with a certain size. It doesn't matter, it can be zero. I select uh, fillet weld uh, 0 0.002, add it, and so on. So I add multiple of conditions and I run the checks multiple times to get the correct result. So I press OK, and uh, then I run this and I receive a table with uh, optimal results. I won't do this now to save some time for you, but it's definitely possible. And please revisit our webinar on optimization. It is something that is uh, a big time saver. And uh, what else I wanted to show you is that there is not only well strength checks, but also other checks like buckling. I have already created the standards, standard yet not calculated it. Uh, I just have to reselect the sections. Okay. So basically, the idea is the same. You have a wizard of uh, multiple parameters to be defined. Let's use this default settings button. We defined everything. Uh, let's use the average stress. And press OK. And see the plate buckling results. I have some plots stored for all entities. Preview. Again, it will take a second to calculate, but uh, the logic is completely the same. So you connect to your FEA program, uh, do some pre processing, combine the loads if necessary, recognize the structural items, and then pick a standard from the library to verify according to. Uh, choose the uh, parameters for that standard, and uh, again, it's possible to we ha we have a extensive help with explanation of every parameter. But uh, better than our help is, of course, the standard document itself. So you can read through the document and find the uh, uh, the uh what i was talking about yeah results are already available so yeah you can find the formulas or you can find the values you you were looking for and for the plate buckling since we picked the average stress on plate we have the average uh one uh, as a result we have one uh utilization factor per plate and we see that we do have some plate that are subjected to buckling so we would have to revisit those also either change the settings of the standard or maybe uh, include some stiffeners inside to split those big panels into something smaller to pass the requirements of the standard. And in the end, you can, of course, list everything in the uh, uh, automatic report. So yeah, basically this tree is structured. You start from top and go to bottom. After the optimization, you go to report, add a complete Let's say results report, and it has a structure of the uh, it has a structure of your uh, project with the description of the results for every individual load load set. You can include some summary. Uh, you can include the explanation of your formulas you used, or the uh, model setup, or the loads combinations, and you store it. And the biggest benefit, uh, again, is that after you build a report and something changes in your model, you just go to your model, update this. What do we have? Top plate, right? We need to change it. So we change it from six millimeters into, I don't know, 10. So property five is 10. We updated it with, um, or updated with the optimization also. Then we click update from TMAP. Clear calculated results. Then we click on analyze the job to get the new results. 
and then we could, yeah, I think uh, it's not two clicks, it's about four or maybe five. But yeah, again, it's a, it's a matter of seconds. You updated the property, cleared results, uh, updated information, analyzed the job, and then you generate a new, new report immediately. Sorry, it was profile number two. You generate a new report uh, with the same structure, but uh, uh, but with the uh, new results. I see there is a plenty of questions to cover, and this is everything I wanted to show for you today. I just noticed the question about the building codes from Germany. Uh, we have uh, well, we have Eurocode, which is basically uh, all European countries or and not limited to European countries covering uh, most of the failure modes like members, welds, uh, fatigue, uh, uh, we even have fire design check, plate buckling, connections and so on. We also have a German, the only German code we have is FKM version 5 and 6 and version 7 is coming uh, really soon. So, in terms of weld strengths, we have uh, and the fatigue, we have FKM. In terms of all the others, we have Eurocodes, which you can use with national German annexes and uh, yeah, to cover your project. Petro, can you maybe guide me through the other questions we have in the list? Yeah, I have a few one, a uh, few questions. Uh, first one is, uh, does the weld recognition works with uh, contacts? Uh, yes, it does. Uh, it works with any type of shell elements with the connection between plate and solid, a shell and solid, and it works with contacts as well. But of course, it's always subjected to your uh, specific model, so better to try. By the way, I forgot to tell it that everybody who uh, attended the webinar today are uh, subjected to an extensive trial. So our typical trial is 14 days, but we can do twice of that for you. Just send me an email immediately after this webinar and we will provide you with one month's trial, which is perfect to spend your uh, winter holidays with, with SDC Verifier. And one more question. Um, is it possible to present the results of only one part of the model? Uh, yes. Uh, the rule-based selector I showed to you is available for everything in the model. So. For example, you can pick the portion of model to be analyzed with this selector. And in the same way, you can pick the portion of model to be um, presented. So you create a plot and here instead of, just a second, instead of all entities, you are uh, selecting a certain material. Well, we have only one for a group of, uh, from EMAP or component or just few properties or uh, picking the elements manually is also possible. So it is possible to present results on uh, whatever you want. You have a full control over that. Okay. Mm, I don't have, uh, I don't see any questions from my side. If uh, someone wants I to ask. I think I've seen something maybe in personal messages to yeah, me, maybe. but I have to stop sharing the screen and in the chat there are few uh, we have 10 more minutes so let's cover them one by one uh, i have a message from Wojciech. hello thank you uh, there is a message uh, the question is how do we model fillet a single fillet weld this is a very nice question and one very um, typical ones uh, the problem with single fillet wells is that there is no general way of calculating it with the FEA method. So we have a workaround for that. You model, uh, you write that it is a double fillet weld and you use half a thickness for it. Uh, the thing is that it will have exactly the same capacity for actual force and uh, uh, shear force, but the problem would be in the bending moment. If you have out of plane bending moment, you should be careful. But we are working on solution. This is a very nice question. We are working on solution to implement that. But for the uh, uh, for the uh, for the moment, we uh, suggest this workaround. Thank you. Uh, there is somebody complimenting the introduction and demo. Thank you very much. 
And the question is, um, has SDC Verifier been used in any big EPC projects? If so, could you share the name of the operator? I'm not completely sure what you mean by EPC. Uh, maybe you can send me an email uh, later on and I can privately reply to you with some of the examples. Uh, but yeah, big offshore companies uh, that I listed in my first slides, they use SDC Verifier for checks according to DNV, uh, and, uh, including DNV also, and they submit these reports to, to be certified. And SDC Verifier is uh, very much uh, known among the industry and uh, uh, yeah, ABS or DNV are well aware of the calculations done by SDC Verifier and these reports get uh, approved and accepted. And then what, there was a question about Germany that I have covered. There is a question, how does SDC Verifier works with ANSYS APDL model and result files? Uh, ANSYS works with ANSYS uh, workbench so from 18.2 and later, you can import APDL model into mechanical and process it. But as the Verifier does not work with ANSYS older than version 18.2. So we would suggest you to upgrade to the latest version or import APDL model into the uh, later on. And uh, yeah, there, there was a quite, ah, Petro also replied, I think, to that one. Uh, Yeah, uh, I, I think know. that's yeah. it. I believe I covered all the questions. If there is something I forgot or missed, because there is a lot of uh, uh, questions from you, but I think I scrolled through all of them. Uh, if I missed something or a lot of questions do appear afterwards, after you uh, start working with the software, again, I would be happy to grant you with the free trial license for a month. So please, uh, yeah. Send me an email to receive uh, this, and uh, yeah, we, we will uh, send this recording as soon as possible. Maybe I see one uh, more question. There is a question, two more. Uh, so uh, let's fin uh, let's finish with this first. Uh, uh, the question is, what kind of calculation is done once the structural member is recognized? And I believe I missed that question from David. Is it based on plate analysis or? Uh, on a check based on standard. It is based on a check on standards. So you can do a buckling analysis with FEMA, for example, the uh, standard buckling. But this standard buckling gives you one uh, buckling factor over full model, which means you will have a buckling factor, which, which means you multiply your model with that factor and this plate was buckle, will buckle. But this is not very effective because as soon as you fix that plate, and you run the buckling analysis again, you will receive the buckling factor or on another plate. So our buckling check is based on plates. Uh, unfortunately, well, I won't be starting sharing my screen because it will, it will take another minute, but maybe you can send me a private message and we will cover that, or I will send you some uh, instructions on that. But we use the dimensions of the plate and thickness of the plate and stresses on this plate, like uh, either you can take a maximum, or uh, average stress on plate or minimum mid plane, which is maximum compression stress to compare it with the capacity and the result of our buckling check is not a buckling factor, but utilization factor. So this is a result uh, results on uh, plates. And the question was somebody asked for ABS fatigue guide. Uh, this is very nice question. Uh, let me share with you my screen to prove that we are working on that now. At the moment, we have uh, only ABS plate buckling codes. There is no ABS fatigue. But if you will look on my uh, desktop, there is a offshore fatigue guide of ABS, which I can open for you. And this is something we are working on at the moment. I cannot say for sure when it is going to be done. It is an extensive standard, but we are working on ABS fatigue guide and it is in progress. Although it is possible to modify existing checks to match that. So there are some workarounds, but uh, it is coming. It is coming uh, in the next version of uh, versions of SDC verifier. 
thank you thank you very much for your questions and uh, uh, your time attending this session we had a very uh, good uh, conversation today I see that David is doing the same with plate buckling check so David if you are uh, in need of any more consultancy let us know and uh, once again thanks for uh, joining us with this session we will share the recording soon and we are happy to cooperate more and help you with your checks according to rules and regulations have a great day and bye-bye thanks bye-bye